Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode of Lewis Bloor's Game Changers. Today, I've got a very, very good friend on. Um, we train a lot together. We talk about business. We talk about personal development. We're here to today to talk about being a little bit more accountable about our training. Chris is going to share a story about climbing Kilimanjaro. Um, and we're also going to talk about a massive, massive challenge um, that Chris is going to embark on later this year and how we're going to get there through training and through accountability. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Bowyer. Bodog, we're live, mate. Mm -hmm. How's it going? All good, mate. You? Really good. Do you know what? I've got notes on my phone for every other guest, but with you, my friend, we're going to freestyle Blank it. canvas. Freestyle. Me and you. Podcast 2020. Shoot what are you saying? Me. Yeah, all well, good. Yeah. Excited. Thanks for having me. I mean, looking at your roster of people that you've got on, you know, coming up and the people that you've already done, I'm uh, delighted to be here. So thanks. Yeah. Well, listen, Bodog, you are a game changer to me, my friend. Thanks for Because me. you're my best mate. We, we do dumb shit together, but when I'm down, <laughs> when we do do some dumb shit, when I'm down, <laughs> you're always there to pick me up um, and vice versa. And we push each other. I mean, yeah. listen, sometimes we argue like cat and dog, yeah. but because we're constantly pushing each other. Do you mm. know what I mean? Um, so there's a slight difference to this podcast. First of all, let's introduce you. So Chris Bowyer, ladies and gentlemen, he is, I mean, we're going to fucking do an intro anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so let's carry on. Um, so as you're well aware, you're one of my oldest friends, but we didn't really get along. You didn't really like me, first of all, did you? <laughs> yeah, so our, <laughs> our friendship is quite new, I think. You know, as friendships goes, it's quite it's quite new as friendships, but we've known each other for for years, what, I don't know, maybe 10 years, maybe, on and off? Probably, I think, yeah, I mean... Uh, maybe, maybe not maybe that long. long. No, what, not, maybe not as long. I was going to say, because... No, no, I don't think it's long. Maybe eight years. Yeah. Yeah, but I think about eight years, yeah. I think you change as you grow up. And I think one thing that, that yeah. me and you, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong, we're different people, but we've kind of got the same goals of, of where we want to move in the next five or 10 years. Yeah, and I also think that we've got very similar, not, not, not only mindsets, but we've got very similar uh, backgrounds, mm. I think, as well. Like our schooling was quite similar in what we did and where we moved to. So what do you mean? You mean areas. when we got kicked out of schools? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> Different I mean, schools. We weren't you, at the same You got schools. kicked out, I left. Whatever. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got, in fact, I got asked to leave. Yeah. Quite kindly, yeah. I got asked to leave. Yeah, can you please um, leave? Thanks. But yeah, so changing school is a weird one because it gives you, at a very young age, you get taken out of your comfort zone, you get thrown into something completely different and you have to adapt to survive. Yeah. And, and that's it. And it's yeah. like, you learn how to be around different people from a very young age, right? Well, I think we, we both were brought up in the private school mm. kind of environment at the beginning, right? Mm. <clears throat> and then we left and got, you know, got thrown into, let's call it normal sort of state school yeah. kind of environments. And the private school environment is very much different <coughs> excuse me it's very different to, to to normal school for me anyway and it was everyone being mates kind of like strict but in a good way you know put, kept you on, on on your toes knowing the year above knowing the year below every like a family environment right and then get thrown into let's call it a state normal school where there's like you know instead of having 20 people to one year and one class yeah. it's 25 people to a class and four classes to a year yeah you know and you can imagine a 13 14 year old ginger Ginger kid going to a normal school, he's yeah, of course, he's, he's, he's game over, right? Yeah, but, you got um, a target painted yeah, on you straight exactly, away. Yeah, exactly right, exactly <laughs> right. But but luckily, uh, uh, you know, they're really cool, cool mates. I've still got now some of my best mates. Uh, Which uh, is how uh, we know through, through yeah, those people, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of how we. And, um, and it worked out, and it worked out well for me. And I think what that's taught me massively in life, and same with working in a pub. You know, when I was 18, 19, I, I did a bit of experience working in a pub. That combined with going from different environments when you're young. It really taught me how to talk to different people from all walks of life yep. in different scenarios, in different ways. And kind of now I feel that I can talk to any, anybody, you know, in business, you know, I can talk to someone, you know, as straight laced as, as you like about a business subject that we're, that we're doing. If we ever go out, whatever it may be, and I bump into someone new that's a bit like, you know, you know, some of the people that you've, that you've interviewed and you're going to interview, I can have a conversation. And that's what it's taught me. So, so in particularly on a night out, that level of self-confidence and the ability to adapt to a certain situation, I do, I would credit you with that skill because I, 
you know, when you're going out, I don't like to go out with like a like a mob of people. You know, mm. you get some lads, they like to go out 15, 20 handed and they love it, mate. For me, that is my worst nightmare. I like going out two, three people. You go mm. out, you meet people and I never have to worry about you handling a conversation or, you know, you've, you've got that skill. And I think maybe because we both had that change up of change of environments, change of schools, change of friendship groups, everything. Because it's not just your friends physically, it's... The, it's the ideals that they have, what they talk about. Yeah, how listen, they, don't get me wrong. It when all changes. Yeah, when you're growing up, you used to go out 15, 15 handed, didn't you? Mm. That's what you used to do because everyone wanted to jump on whatever everyone else was doing. But as you get older, you realise that actually those a lot of the people that are around you in those kind of groups aren't really there for you. You're not really. You might not even really be there for them. Right. Well, exactly. Yeah. And and it kind of whittles it down, and then you go through the stage like early twenties, mid twenties, where it's just you know a bit of carnage with the with the group that is, is now kind of similar to you, but different in a lot of ways because they're not necessarily again people when people go out and they spend time with the friends they've got around them. When you're older, you realise and your friends group shrinks even more you realize that you've had to shrink that that friendship group for you to grow mm. as a person and and you know improve in your ideals your goals and whatever, whatever else is you're doing i know i've done that in the last two years massively mm. um and it's and it's but again you learn it all from 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 your past and, and my past is very similar to yours and we, and that's why I think we get along because we've got similar mindsets. We definitely have very similar mindsets but we communicate very well with each other. Like we talk about that actively a lot and I feel like um, when you're a kid, when you're 15 years old, you hang around people who are fucking crazy, man. You hang around people who are literally... You hang around them because you know you're going to get a good laugh out of them. When as you get older, you want to be around people that lift you up, you know, that accept you as you are mm but want you to be better. Yeah. You know, that yeah. text I sent you on your birthday, where yeah. I remember I said, friends are the family you choose, and a friend is someone who lifts you up, not by um, telling you yes and, you know, giving you, the, it's, it's about questioning those places where you can improve, but helping you rise to those challenges. Mm. And I definitely think me and you both do that when it comes to work, when it comes to training, when it comes to absolutely everything. Like, the fact you're such good mates with, 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 with Yasmin, my girlfriend as well, I love... Um, and I think th there was definitely a time where I realized that I felt quite alone, you know, when I've been doing this whole town yeah. thing yeah. and I remember feeling quite alone and I felt like because I'm surrounding myself with people that I don't respect, I don't idolize them, I don't particularly like them, but I have to be around them. And now because I've got three, four people around me, including my brothers, you, Yasmin, um, I feel very, very grateful and I feel like I'm in the right spot with my group and it might be you know, a couple of people, mm. but they are people that I know, I love them, and I feel like, I love you, Boya. I love you, bro. You're a good kid, Boya. So <laughs> going back to your, your question about, you know, our friendship's quite early, but we, we've known each other for sort of 10, eight, 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were an absolute plum. <laughs> I was, I mate. an absolute plum. Geez, I can hold my hands up and I can say, yes, sir. But the reason absolutely. I thought you were an absolute plum is is because you were, you were doing your, your, your TV thing. <clears throat> I knew you through people, through other people. Right. And we were in certain circumstances and situations together. Hello, mate, how you doing? That was it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's because, you know, you have that kind of stigma of when you're doing those things on TV and you're in those environments, you see it from, it's almost like, you know, secondhand kind of stuff. Of course. Um, and I think you were probably a bit of a, bit of a plum, to I be to be honest. But I think after we got close in the last couple of years, you you had already gone through that and you'd come out the other side and you knew that that is not what not only what you're about deep down but also not really what anyone should be about of course, at, at yeah. all and we were we 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 spent close proximity together for a, a good few months and gradually i kind of got that mm. and it 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 was really, really nice to see because you started to talk to me about stuff that I, you didn't know that I liked and even stuff that I didn't even realise that I'd be into mm. and, I, and I got a lot of value from that and then we started training together. Definitely stepped it up with the gym. That's one thing that I used to push yeah. you on that you would respond to. Um, so I, f I absolutely hold my hands up and say that there was a definitely a cockiness and an arrogance about me 
looking back, I think maybe that was a defense mechanism from being in the position that I was um, in and having to. Yeah, you but can't I think that's quite you natural as well. Kind of show the weakness. You can't show the vulnerability mm. because mm. because in order to be vulnerable and weak, you really have to have a confidence about yourself, yeah. especially to share it with other people, which I just didn't have. Yeah. So you layer that on top of bravado and confidence. You and go panache, the other way and right you, you overcompensate. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and just a barrier. It's it, a, yeah, exactly. And and also, I mean, not only that, I'm sure there were bits to me that. Um, that I would change, but but you grow up, you change mm. that. You don't you don't want to be the same person at thirty that you were at twenty. Mm. Um, you know you certainly don't want to be the same person at fifty years old that you were at twenty. And it is about that journey, and I'm, I'm you know I'm very aware of that. Um, but in those social situations where we used to go out, where there was so many people around, it was like you don't always want to be there. And it's like you know that one or two people might like you, the other lot might not. And then it's just, you just, boom, all right, well, I'm just going to be cocky and I yeah. kind of own it. But it got me in a lot of trouble, man. You know what I mean? It did get me in a lot of trouble and it got me into arguments with people that I didn't want to argue with. And, mm. you know, so I think it's just just a question of growing up. Mate, I'm not saying that I'm not a plum these days. I probably, I, I definitely do still definitely do like, plum, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. cheers, bro, man. I'm really no going to get you on keys. But it's funny, it's funny, cause, <laughs> it's funny because, you, you know, the stuff that you've, you talk about and the person that you were and that barrier that you put in the overcompensation of, you know, I'm not bothered kind of thing. I went through that in a totally different environment. So, you know, when you were doing your thing, I was coming through sort of the business kind of angle mm. for me because, you know, of what I wanted to create and what I'm, you know, what I'm doing. And in those environments, you kind of have to have the same persona because you have to be the, the, the cocksure, cocky, look at me, I'm the best in the room, I'm going to do the, 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 the most business, you know, and, mm. and it's all... A bravado, like you, on, you know, you used to be on screen. It was, you know, I think you, it's just life, isn't it's it? Like, exactly right, exactly right. It, it's life. It's, it's you've done it in your environment. I've done it in my environment. I think so many people do it in their own environments, whether no matter what they're doing, that you go through a stage where you feel like you have to act, you know, the best version of anyone could ever be, mm -hmm. even though you, you, you really, that's just a defense mechanism in whatever it is you're going through to then come out the other side and you get your knockbacks in that. And because you're not really confident deep down, but you've got this provider, when you do get knockbacks, it hurts even more because right. you already feel that the, you're, you're not good enough so, anyway. So this right? is, so, so what, what I would go on to say and expand on that is that it's a fine balance between acting the part and acting, you know, the big I am, but also being aware that you're human, you're not perfect, and the sooner you start working on your weaknesses, yeah. the sooner you'll improve. Yeah. But you're allowed to do that in private. What you're not allowed to do, which is the mistake that I've made, and I'm sure you've made, is sell yourself on the fact that you are the big yeah. I am, yeah. so that when a mistake does happen, uh, yeah. you are emotionally and intelligently unequipped to deal with the fact that you have vulnerabilities. Yeah. So be cocky, Walk the walk, strut the strut, boy. But make sure you but talk the talk as make well, sure that right? when you're in your own private time, you look at yourself. And if mm. you if you want to if you want to be a gardener, you want to keep a beautiful garden. You can't just plant the roses. You got to pick the weeds out too. Mm. And I think that's something that I learned as well. Now I, I actually went the other way, um, which I feel like I've definitely come back out of now, and I've drawn strength from it. But I definitely went the other way where I was. I had low self-esteem. I, I, you know, I, I believed that I'd just been a cocky prick for a long, long time. And, and once that sinks in, it's like it's like water getting into a ship. If the water doesn't get in, that ship's going to stay afloat. Um, it might not have any direction if you're cocky and the ship doesn't have direction. But if you let your the negativity of the outside world get in, you will sink. And, and, yeah. and that, that does happen. So, yeah. so it's... I saw that quote on Instagram too. It's a good one, yeah. It is. A, <laughs> well, you, you know, a ship safe in the harbour, but that's not what ships are made for. <laughs> but there is, there is a certain element to... Get out in the world and walk yeah. the walk, right? But it, be aware, you're fucking human, bro. Yeah. No one's perfect. Yeah. The sooner you start to realise that and make active improvements, the sooner you will become un well. You can't ever become untouchable, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But we listen. We grow up in Essex. You know, it's all about I'm fucking powerful. This, that, and the other. And and I'm I'm a cliche of having everything that a 16 year old, 18 year old boy ever wants to come true. It come in true, but then because I've not done the internal work. It's not actually what I want. Mm. I'm not happy with that person. Mm. Um, but we're here now. I've got you. I've got my lovely girlfriend. And we are on a great path. You're Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, you are absolutely welcome, mate. Right, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. Thanks for coming. Thanks right. for coming. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> See ya. Bye, everyone. No, so one of the main things we're here to talk about, and great intro, by the way, Bo. Cheers, was, mate. That was deep and profound. I've got time for that. Um, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go that way, but... You were just on a roll, mate. And I'm, you know, it's, 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 it's good. Very articulate. One of the things we are here to really, really push on is our accountability yeah. agreed 
We <coughs> train, we yeah. box, we do yoga. When was the last time we done yoga together? A while ago now. How many yoga sessions have we done in the past 12 months? Two? Uh, 12 months? No, we've done, we've done a few in the last 12 months. Three or four? Uh, yeah, well, I say a few. It's like five or six. I reckon yeah, it's... Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last 12 months we've done. Well, seven, well, seven well to be fair, maybe... <laughs> I've done, I've done some, you've done some independent. No, no, together, some, together, 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 together. Together. Three, two, two yeah. Or three, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how many times have we boxed in the past 12 months together? Three or four, or five maybe. Yeah, maybe. Probably three, I think. Yeah, three. Had some that. Yeah. Which is stuff we love to do, yeah. right? We absolutely love to do it, but, but we get busy, we get distracted. It's not that we, we don't, don't have focus. the, yeah, it's not that we don't have the time. We, we don't, don't make time. It. We don't make the time. We don't and, organize yeah, our time. And that's what I've learned is making the time and stuff. And, um, off the back of, because last year, beginning of last year, is when I started training again, on and off. Mm. And then I had a few injuries, my knees, uh, old injuries that I had. How are your knees? I remember they were, they were we got you walking, yeah. we got you doing the running and stuff. Yeah, You're yeah. running every day at the minute yeah, in the mornings. Yeah, yeah pretty that's, much, that's, yeah. I've completely yeah. forgot your knees were bad. Yeah. I, remember, I remember we started just going 20 minutes a day walking on the treadmill, wasn't well, it? it? Mate, it was my own fault. See, my, my, my saving grace and my downfall is my mentality to be the best or, or do anything that anyone says I can't do. Yeah. That's again, like I say, it's my doubt, but it's also yeah. my, my strength because I mean, the whole situation, with my knees, me uh, and two of my, my two of my ex business partners that we uh, started the company together, still going, they're still two of my good, good friends. We were sitting there one day, we were talking, it was like, oh, it'd be great to do these things, you know, it'd be great to do this. We were like, oh, imagine like climbing something like Kilimanjaro, like, what a thing. And we were fortunate enough to be in a position where we could actually book it, train and do it. So, yeah. and it was like, a, oh yeah, but you, you wouldn't do that. Well, I would, but yeah. Well, you're not gonna, so well, what was this, my, what, so, Kilimanjaro? Yeah, this, so this was Kilimanjaro. So anyway, we've done it, we booked it, but my mentality <laughs> is like, yeah, no, we'll train for it, all this sort of stuff. We'll, we'll go to an altitude chamber in London and we'll train every every other day. I, w I went there once in like eight months. Yeah, but uh, but only because in my brain, I can do anything. I, I can do anything. I'm very much a mind over matter situation and that's great, but you still need to kind of put the work well, in what, for your brain to be able to overcome the difficulties on that task. Well, right? this is this is one of the reasons that I think it's going to be good for us to have a fitness challenge element to this podcast because I know you, yeah, and when me and you talk about this stuff as well and I'm like, right, let's do the yoga, do the boxing, do this. Yeah. You are like, mate, I am in, I'm not scared, let's do it, I'm yeah. not shook, yeah. blah, yeah. I'll see you there at 7am, which are some, you are actually pretty good with turning up on time. But then also you just slack off, same as me. Yeah. But but as 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 men, as physical people, we we want to be about these challenges. Yeah. I, I want to get twelve months from now. I want to sit down here with you, and I want to be like, we've done this, 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 and this. We might not have done them very well, but we finished the race. We climbed yeah. the mountain. Yeah, we got yeah. it done. Yeah. Um, but that's what one. So Kilimanjaro, you got done though, yeah. Yeah, we got done. Yeah, got got it done. But the but the uh, point I was trying to make was. I didn't do enough physical training in the in this kind of the run up to it. The the task itself, like climbing Kilimanjaro, it's not a technical climb, so you're not sort of like climbing rocks and you know be laying off whatever. It's, flat it's incline. It, it's a it's a it's a long walk uphill basically. Some some days you're walking eight hours, some days you're walking fifteen hours, but it's a it's a long walk. But you obviously with the altitude, you need to be fit. The fit you are, the easier stuff is right. And mm. there were some people that were getting stretched off the mountain, and there were some people that were running up the mountain. Do you know what I mean? So and it was all down to fitness. And leading up to it, we did uh, Ben Nevis and Snowden consecutively uh, uh, t uh, two days over a weekend on both of them. And you can do it up and down in a day. Up and down, fine, okay, or, or you know, a bit strenuous, but you can do it. Coming down, you, you, you're you're three three hours of of, of r kind of hopping down this mountain. Well, walking and, walking and downhill gets your uh, your quads and it does the ligaments on your right. knees because Correct, you're yeah. you're balancing. It's not it's less when you're walking up. You're activating your back chain, yeah. um, hamstrings, glutes. Yeah. You're leaning forward. You're holding your back up like that. Yeah. When you're walking down, it's all front loaded. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. coming exactly down right. and not being as fit as gets you. You know my two mates, Bob and Rob. Bob and Rob, <clears throat> Bob and Rob, yeah, <laughs> little duo. They, um, <laughs> that, you know, they, 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 they did it, and because with were you ligament, keeping pace with them? And I was, they I was, were keeping, going, I was <sighs> yeah, I, I was, I was trying to keep pace with them. And coming down, what you do is you come down, and if you're sort of just stepping bit by bit down the mountain, it's actually harder to do that than like, kind of skipping down because yeah. you use your momentum to kind of skip off, skip yeah. off, skip off. Yeah. And there's times where you kind of slow down your walk, but if you skip, and I saw Bob doing, I was like, yeah, that works, and I'll 
bit of momentum. But all, if you do that three hours, your knees are burning. Your knees are absolutely on fire. My knees were absolutely so on So you fire. had a lot of damage on your knees, right? Yeah, so off the back of not training very well, I did the, the, did the training leading up to it. Then did, did Killy. Amazing experience. I'd advise anyone else to do it. It's wicked. You, you could see the curvature of the earth when you're up there. You've got glaciers around you. There was a bit, <laughs> there was a bit when, um, oh, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you this one, this one bit. So you get to base camp. And you sit off at like 12 at night because the mountain freezes to itself, right? Um, so it, it minimizes rockfall. And it's all pitch black when you start off. So up until that point, we were having a laugh and a joke. We even did like a music video, like we video, like a music video, like a, a, a dub over music video. Like to, a boat, uh, boat Don't and Stop Me Now from, from Queen. Because we were walking up this mountain, it was like day two, we were like, well, how can we spice <laughs> this up a bit? And, and we were talking about, why don't we do a little music, like dub over, dub over a music video and pretend to be like playing instruments or whatever. And, uh, and we were saying, yeah, don't stop me now by Queen because I'm a big Queen fan. So we, we end up doing that. Got to, and by the time we get to base camp, which is like day five, we've, we've done it all. So we had fun. But day five, people are getting stretched off now, altitude sickness, and it became a bit real. And, go, and listen, don't get me wrong. This is just my experience. I've spoken to people where I've gone, you know, I've, I've climbed Kidron Java. They've gone, no, no, I'm like, I can't, I'm like, you know, what's that about? And other people were like, yeah, my nan ran up it for, yeah, <laughs> to, 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 to a graph hour kind of thing, you know? I'm like, how, oh, long, yeah. how long did it take start to finish? Well, we did, you can do diff different routes. We did the longest route. So um, number one, for, so we could uh, climb, uh, climb ties to altitude better, but also we wanted to like kind of maximize the experience. So we did over seven days. You can do it over five days or seven days depending on the route. Anyway, we're up, we're, we're going up, you know, a couple of hours in and you, you, you've got these, these poles and you're all, I had, I had a uh, air, um, oxygen tank on my back and these things up my tube. Bob's just strolling, strolling away, Rob's all right. I'm, I'm, like, I'm under it here. Um, and a bear comes bouncing over the top, rocks come out over the top, it's starting to get a bit light. You see the path you're on is only two feet wide. You see down there, it's not steep, but you get enough momentum, you, you're in trouble. Yeah. And I was like, what am I doing up here? What? You know, it's, it's mad when you, it comes to-, to So go on, so, so how long was the whole process of walking this mountain? Seven days, and yeah, was that's up and down? Yeah, up and down. Wow. So, so it's like five. It's like five. It's like five. But five and a half days up, and then a day and a half down, purely because of altitude. They do it for safety. And, you, your, you and can, your knees, your 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 knees were busted for a long time. But now you've you're you're running every day. So yeah. you've took some time. You've got yourself back in the gym. You've recovered properly. Yeah. Well, beginning of last year, I started training again, and I was like, you know, I, I really want to do these triathlons and, and set some goal, goals and targets. Started training. Knee, knees knees started to go. So training slacked. Work started to kick off. So I was focusing on that, and my training just kind of slacked off. But I'd I'd kind of got the bug back then. Back in the last year. It was well, I, I remember you said you wanted to do an Ironman, but yeah. but you was it was like mid October. You were like, "Blah, I'm doing an Ironman by the end of the year." There's one in Australia, but you only just got your knees back better. I was thinking, "Bo, yeah, you're a lunatic, mate." But this I, def is the thing. I definitely in my head, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm I know, and it. I believe yeah. it. But I'm looking, I'm thinking, you're you're not approaching this like a, a sensible person. You're not appro you're, you're approaching this from a bravado point of view, and yeah. A, and, a, and, and honestly, it's a place of like. It's a dangerous place to come from because yeah, you'll end right, up yeah. injuring yourself. Yeah. You've yeah. got, you know, you're 30, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Well, not your whole life, but you've got about 60% left. Um, <laughs> same as me, bro. Same as me, bro. But um, <laughs> bit, yeah. bit of a wake up call there, yeah. Well, not if you're not training for the fucking mountain climbs. You've got, well, you got about 10% yeah. there. Um, but what I'm saying is you can do it in time. I think we should build up to an Ironman. It's definitely something I'm interested in doing, but, or maybe a half Ironman, whatever. Maybe, maybe we just go and do the 5K park run. But what I'm saying is the point of this episode, and we've only got about 15 minutes left where we, we can talk. So I want to get to the main point, cool. which is our fitness challenges. I want to build us up gradually throughout this year, Bodog, where in February or March, we start with a 10K run. Then we hit a half marathon. Then we hit a triathlon. Boom. And, and, between me and you, I think what would be a good idea is if we find a couple of points, a couple of events, one in February, one in March, that we can put out to the listeners and the viewers, and they vote to say, right, you guys have got to do this challenge. Yeah. Then we have to do it. Yeah. Because then your mindset of not only the mindset of you want to do it, but the fact you know that you're competing with me yeah. each time, you're going to do the training. Yeah. I'm going to do the training as well because I'm not going to want to lose. And then we're going to actually three or four months from now, it's not going to be, oh yeah, you know, we've done one big challenge in 2020. It's like, no, nah, we actually, we, we, got, yeah. we got a fair bit done. Fair bit, yeah, so this, so this was pretty much the main reason why I was, I was excited to come on here. And it was, for me, it's, it's about doing the stuff and talking about the stuff that loads of people are interested in doing and, and talking about. Mm. 
but completing it yourself. When you when you sent to me, I'm doing this podcast. We want to talk about this, have these people on, but I also want to talk about this stuff. Be held accountable. Level up. All this kind of almost like personal development kind of side of it. I was like, I'm I'm in. Well, I think because it's, because what we talk about day to day is is quite it's, it's it's good stuff, right? Yeah, I think it's I think it's one thing to reach out and speak with people that I you know look up to and I think are interesting people, but you know this is something that. That, that we control and it's something that if I wanted to, I want to have one of my mates on, I can. And it's not like we're just sitting here shooting the shit, which yeah. we are, but what I want to do is actually <clears throat> make us accountable, give, you know, viewers and listeners a journey that they can follow us on. And if we don't do the training and we fuck up, it's going to be hilarious. But if we actually, you know, who knows, uh, mate, 18 months from now, mm. if we stick to this, we could get ourselves quite fit. We could be, I'm not saying we could be serious contenders, but we'll start. We won't be the last at the pack round, round no. the triathlon. Well, you, you're going to have to keep up with me, mate, because I, I have. I, I'm going <laughs> to. My training's got to be on point because I have booked, <laughs> done, completed, got a slot in the Ironman that I was going to do last year. Shut up! All done, Are you yeah. kidding me? I've booked it. Yeah. When for? It's, a, it's a, uh, Western Australia, December the sixth. Done. Oh my god! Yeah. And the Am reason I'm booking that as well. And the reason I have to book that. Well, too? listen, if you're not scared, it's, it's, I think it's I am there. scared. Bobby, I think this is your biggest but I'm, downfall. But I'm scared. You but should I'm scared. be no, no, no. scared. No, 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 no hear me out. Hear me out here, right? Hear me out here. Listen, I'm uncomfortable. I was, I was like, I'm uh, shook. I'm, yeah, I was uncomfortable booking that, but that's why I did it. Get me out of my comfort zone, and I and, I, and I'm alright. I, I just, I just got to get that momentum. Get that, that. Now I've got that. Right. Date, so wait. That so wait. So wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because we are running out of time. We've got the studio for a certain amount of time. We do need to get through this. So. We've got the end goal. We know the journey that we're going to be taking month by month. Let's put our heads together. And next time we sit down, we're going to have a couple of options for people to choose. Yeah. Um, Park runs, triathlons, like sprint triathlons, whatever you it may need be. Like. To. I've got something in the car for you. Oh my God, actually, first of all, Boya. <laughs> Thank you, darling. This is your Christmas present that yeah. you didn't come round to get while I was away, mate. Well, I was, I was, mate, I was so, on, I was so ill over Christmas New Year. Thank you. Come on quickly. Uh, so while you're opening that, we're going to definitely make sure that we're keeping up to date with these fitness challenges. Yep. We're going to be on top of the mental agility and physical agility. Now, this book is called The Richest Man in Babylon. Nice. It's not just about money. It's about being rich in life, but it does talk about financial stuff it's like short stories um and it's definitely a book worth reading if anyone wants yeah, to get nice. out there it's short it's easy to read but i was meant to give him that at christmas i went to thailand thank you mate and, it, and thank you he didn't come around and pick it up so my we're christmas now Janu present. january the 16th 17th and um and that's your don't book. make me sound bad I, I was ill in bed i was in, right, I got so out of bed for christmas got out of bed for new year you i could have done without it all to be honest but so aside from the book we have been sent through by yeah, our nice. amazing sponsor pranamat which is basically like it's a mat you laid out. Look, I'm a big guy. Yeah, I get paintings. You've seen yeah, them on yeah, Instagram yeah, online. Yeah, yeah, mate, yeah. I've seen them for years. Yeah. I've had one for about a week. Mate, they are absolutely garbage. Really? So we sit down in work, sit down at the office, and I get pains in my yeah. back. Not only, you know, when you're doing weights and stuff, you come home eight. So instead of getting an actual massage, you put this mat down, you've got the full set. It's got this patented lotus flower. It's got 7,900 points from this patented yeah. lotus flower. Are they rock hard, these mate, things? Mate, they're rock hard. Yeah. You lay down on them. When you get up, it looks like you've been laying on a bed yeah, of needles, yeah, 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 but yeah. it increases your blood flow. I'm using it. So when you when you start stepping up with the, with the training yeah. and start really getting into it, we've got one in the yeah. car for you. Yeah. Let's take it home and we're going to keep up to date with the progress. Yeah. It's honestly amazing. It's called Pranamat Eco. I've only just started using it for a week, but mate, all my back pains, everything's gone. I feel loose. I feel limber. I think there's loads of bits and pieces like that. I was, I was listening to a podcast the other day with... Uh, it was one of Joe Rogan's ones, and he was talking about this, this, this like U-shaped kind of stretching funnel, if you like, that stretches out all the middle of your, like the, your, your your hips. Yeah. Because I think he was saying that your hips are some of the most important parts of your body to stretch out because oh. it increases mobility in every other area or something. And he was talking about these bits. There's loads of different bits and pieces that we don't even know about that we need to use. Yeah. Well, this isn't this isn't about stretching. This is about blood flow circulation right. because look in this day and age it, look you know we've I've been sat here like three hours today yeah i'm gonna i'll go home and have a little 10 15 minutes on it when i get home yeah, before yeah. i get in bed yeah. um it's very important we're, we're always lent forward we don't activate our back chain yeah. and, and us slouch i try know, and be quite c uh, conscious of posture but naturally it's just it's just kind of it yeah is. Look, we're not we're not full-time athletes but my point is not yet pranamat for recovery <laughs> yoga for flexibility you know we need to layer it it yeah. can't just be one thing, if we're going to actually, if, if you want to get to Ironman, and I feel like 
I am scared, but I would love to say, yeah, yeah, I fucking smashed an iron. Yeah, man. And, and that's completely a, that's in the time. A, listen, uh, it's been, it's been. A, but you need a, to do the right training. It's been a bucket list thing for me for, for a couple of years now. I, I've been wanting to do it for ages, and there's no time like the present. Like you know, I'm much happier that you're saying this in January because when is it December? Yeah, I'm much it, happier yeah. that you're saying this in January. Geez, you were literally eight weeks before. You were like, "Well, I'm done. I'm doing it. I'm going to Australia." Yeah, man. I was like, I was like "It's yeah, done. Not, it's done." It not. in my head. Of course, I was like, "If you are, yeah. you're coming back, and you're gonna have to have your foot chopped, your, leg, your legs chopped off from the knee <laughs> down because you're just not gonna do it, mate." Yeah. But um, I, I don't even know if that's enough time. But I'm sure it, you can no, definitely it make is, a is, crack is, at it. Is. Listen, I, I went into a bike shop and I was talking to some people that know some triathletes and Ironmen and all this sort of stuff, and and I've asked a couple of people the same question. I said, "Look, I'm thinking about doing this. I haven't really done a lot of it before." Am I mad? Like I, I think I've it's that in my head I'm done. I've crossed the finish line, it's done, right? Yeah. It's just a process for me now, right? And I was like, Am I mad? And he went, and all of them have said, Do do you think you can do it? And I've said yes. And they said, Well that's it. That's it. Like if you I believe that you it, can. And and the reason why why that was so nice to hear is because it, it that's that's kind of how I am anyway. So if someone's saying that, that that's a big, big part of it, then great. The rest is a process for me. Yeah. One guy who who works at a bike shop does does you know silly amounts of miles on bikes and does triathletes triathlon sorry he uh, he he said I know people. he does he does triathletes yeah, yeah he does triathletes he yeah. just does, he does triathletes well, let's, let's keep it PG um, <laughs> th- he he said to me he said to me look he said I know people that have trained for a year year and a half up to an Ironman and then haven't actually done it because of anxiety or right, they right. feel like they actually can't do it they're fit enough to do it but their brain has said yeah. you can't really do this I I'm the opposite. I think I've done it and I'm doing it. I need to put, I need to put the work in. So you know? look, how about this? Let me make a suggestion in regards to putting this plan into place. We need to ease ourselves in because we need to get used to smashing targets. We need mm. to get used to actually putting ourselves in a position where we say we're going to do something and getting it done. Yeah, That's the first obstacle to overcome. Then we need to ramp it up. Each month we go by, there's a tougher and tougher thing. If we can get a half marathon done, if we can get a triathlon, whatever, you know, start with a sprint triathlon, go to a normal one, then move it up and up and up, and eventually we'll get there. But I think the first thing is we've got to turn up day one, race day. Have you heard of Park Run? Yeah. Right, Park Run, them. 5Ks in most parks up and down the country. Yeah. Um, you turn, you have to register, you turn up at 9 a.m. or, you know, quarter to 9, 9 a.m. And I went to one in Fulham Park one time. There must have been three, 400 people there. Saturday morning, 9 a.m., everyone's up, all in their gym gear. As I come out of the station, um, I was, as I was walking to the park, you just see little swarms of people just walking along, all in their running gear, groups of guys, groups of girls. Everyone's there, everyone's got a good night's yeah. sleep. I think that's something that, first of all, I never knew about it. So mm. if viewers and listeners take that away and... They get out. I mean, there's people that get around in 15 minutes. There's people that take 45 minutes, 50 minutes to get around. And there's there's women pushing babies around in prams. There's people walking their dogs. It's not a race. It's just get up and do something. Yeah. Um, if people have Saturday mornings free, I would I would definitely recommend as a start of a new year, park run. Start Go online, run, yeah. check it out. I think we should start with that. Well, I've, I've, I think, listen, let's do that anyway. But me, when me and you go to the gym, I mean, I, we, we run 5K anyway, right? So I think it's a good thing to do from the event point of view and to get in that spirit of completing something and doing it the thing. But I think our, our first real test will be a, stri- a sprint pro- triathlon will be our first real test, I think. But what, in February? What I'm saying is we no, should... No, I'm just saying should... in general. Like our, whatever our first right. one is, that will be our test. Cool. I don't think I'm... a park run that will be a test for us. No, no, no. Good I'm, event I'm not saying it's do. a test, but I mean, look, it depends how hard you push yourself. If you turn up yeah, and do true. 5K yeah, and you yeah. try and sprint, yeah, mate, try, that's yeah, a that's test. True, that's true. So it's about, it's it's not just the physical challenge. What it's about, it's about organizing something. Throughout the weeks leading up to it, you keep your mind focused on the challenge. You're training for that event. Even if it's a 100 meter sprint, it doesn't matter. It's it's not about, I'm not talking about a physical challenge. I'm talking about the hard part isn't turning up race day and doing it. The hard part is if you're saying you're going to train four days a week and you're going to stretch out twice a week, you're going to lay on the pranamat twice a week. It's sticking to it. So that's where we're testing ourselves. So in February... We set ourselves, maybe we put a park run or we offer something else. People can vote, whatever, see how that goes. It'd be great if people do. If not, we're going to do the challenges anyway. Yeah. Benefits us. But do you see what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. It's, it's the booking, organizing, sticking to it and putting other stuff in life to one side mm. to focus on the end result. Yeah. You get that right, you get the Ironman done. Yeah. But start small and it's like anything in life. You don't have to set out and do the Ironman straight away. You just got to turn up race day yeah. prepared. Yeah. Not just turn up, you got to turn up prepared. So how about this for a natural progression? February, March, and onwards. 5K, 10K, yeah. half, half, half marathon, yeah. Yeah. Sp- uh, sprint triathlon, yeah. triathlon, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Before you know it, you might get there, right? Mm, uh, I'm definitely getting there, yeah. Like, we, we will definitely get there. Now, that's not being me. 
it's that's not me being um, big headed or whatever. It, we we will do it, but we have to approach we, it we will differently do it. 100%. to what we're used but to. But not don't 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 underestimate the challenge that we're setting about of here. Course, because yeah, absolutely, give it yeah. the respect yeah, yeah, it deserves, yeah, 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 totally. and, and we yeah, will yeah, complete it. Totally, absolutely. Well, look, I think we've I think we've pretty much done for time mate yeah. listen you're coming on i feel like i feel like i want to get you on a lot because it's nice for me to speak to someone who i still talk to every day mm. and, and not get too wrapped up in the world of you know i'm just trying to have conversations with people mm. so when i'm talking to other people on the podcast it uh, you know i just want to make sure that i'm keeping it normal and keeping it genuine so i yeah. feel like i feel like we should get on we should get a challenge in place in february that people can decide which one we're going to do we should then do a podcast before podcast after see how we actually got on yeah um and make it something that we are accountable for 100 yeah. percent. i mean if i if i was if i was somebody listening to this podcast it would be for me personally it'd be really nice to hear and and, and quite motivational really for keep that, keep that for for like that. sorry for 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 me to be hearing normal people talking who haven't really done this before talk about doing it yeah because it's you know you, 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 me and you listen to podcasts all the time right and it's and the people that are on there are, you know they're excelling what they do they've they're top of a lot of their games and it's 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 motivational sure you know and it's it's good to hear because it goes well i want to get there but talk hearing podcasts about normal people setting normal goals that they haven't actually reached yet or done before it, it would inspire you know it would it would get me to well, do that's, it. well that's what we're here to do yeah. if we can take ourselves from fairly regular people to achieving something yeah. and show people that it just takes one first thing to do i mean it's going to benefit us anyway if we can help other people along the way a little yeah. bit then then it's all good right yeah. that's all we got time for time absolutely flew by first of many challenge team podcast thanks for having me love you Bodog. cheers mate